Okay, welcome back to Statistics. This is Dr. Kling. Today I'm going to talk about power of a test. Uh, some years I cover this and some years I don't. It usually isn't a major factor on the AP. Anyway, the, um, the definition of power relates to type 2 error. So we know that alpha significance gives you the, pr the probability of a type 1 error and that's something that you set that is not calculated that is not calculated instead it's chosen by in effect by the decision maker if you that is when you decide whether to accept or reject the null hypothesis, you do it on the basis of an alpha, and you can pick alpha. You can pick alpha equals 0 0.2, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, whatever you want. So you pick that. <coughs> okay, and then we, we can define beta as the probability of a type 2 error. And I'll just say that 1 minus beta is the power of the test. So power then is a good thing. More power is good. And um, there, are, there are basically three ways to have get more power. Uh, the first is good experimental design. Um, and we don't, that we won't really talk about specifics on that because that's often, that, that's actually, the, the types of issues there tend to be pretty advanced. Second is higher sample size, so more n. Uh, larger sample. Let me just put larger sample in parentheses. That will give you more power. And the third is um, a higher alpha. Now, but a higher alpha is bad in in some sense because it raises your chance of a type 1 error. So these first two methods are good, the third one is bad. Okay, the now calculating, okay, so one thing about beta, type 2 error, that's different from alpha, beta is calculated and you, it's calculated using a specific alternative. So if we had a null hypothesis that mu equals uh, 15, and the alternative mu is greater than 15, the power requires a specific alternative. So to do, to do power or beta need a specific alternative. Okay, mu greater than 15 is a general alternative. The specific alternative might be such as H A mu equals 20. Okay, and what our strategy will be is essentially beta is the p-value for the cutoff, and I'm going to explain the, how, where we get the cutoff in a minute, 
under the specific alternative. Now a lot of um, books on this will will draw two uh, two sketches next to each other. One with the the null hypothesis, let's say 15, and one with the alternative 20, and then they'll specify an area in here that's the power. I think having two curves on the same graph is uh, is confusing, so I prefer to do it one at a time. So let me uh, let me just do that. So first, we pretend that the null hypothesis is true. So we do our our usual thing pretend the null hypothesis is true and then we find the natural units for which we will just reject the null hypothesis so If we have the mean is 15, and we have a standard deviation, and we have a sample size, and we ha when we say let alpha equal 0.05, then we're giving us ourselves a 5% probability of rejecting. And what we're doing is we're we're taking that fifth percentile and we're saying what are the natural units that correspond to that given sigma over n. So if if everything were normally distributed, um, which you know actually but they're often not, but if if it, if it was normally distributed, then we could use uh, a z type calculation. That is, we to find out the z here, we would do infnorm 0.05, and I forget what that is. Is that 1.64? I hope that's right. Uh, if not, it's 1.96. So let's say that that's the inv norm. I'll just I'll just call it z because I'm not sure what what the number is. Okay, so we have z, and then we say z is equal to x bar, and that's what we're solving for x bar minus mu over and mu will be the mu naught 15 over sigma over square root of n. So we solve for an x bar, and let's say we get the x bar that corresponds to this, let's say, is uh, 18. So what that means is we found the cutoff. That's what I mean by the cutoff. If we get an x bar greater than 18, that means that the p-value will be less than 0.05, and we will reject H naught, whereas if X bar is less than or equal to 18, the P value will be greater than or equal to 0.05 and will fail to reject. Okay, now that we've found the cutoff 18, we leave this graph behind. Let's not draw another graph on top of it. Let's just, all we care about is this cutoff of 18. And now, sort of step two, we pretend that the specific alternative is true. So our specific alternative is that uh, mu is 20. And then we carry over this uh, value of 18 as our cutoff. And we ask, in effect, what is the p-value for 18? We act as if the null hypothesis is true. We act as if we'd gotten a value of 18. And we say, what's the probability? Because everything, if we get any number to the left here, we will be committing a type 2 error because the true value is 20, but yet we will not be to the right of the cutoff, therefore we'll fail to reject even though we should be rejecting because the alternative is true. So by calculating the p-value on this side of the cutoff relative to the alternative, 
we're capital calculating beta, the probability of type two error, and so that's just a, sim the, a simple p-value. If 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 things are normal, if this is normal, then then we're going from natural units to percentiles. So we calculate z is equal to eighteen minus twenty over sigma over square root of n. And if again, if it's normal, then we can do a norm CDF from negative ten to z and that will equal beta and remember power equals one minus beta so the key I think just the key things to remember are that power is against a specific alternative um, and that the three ways to increase power are uh, be good experimental design or better experimental design uh, larger sample uh, and higher alpha, which really doesn't, uh, is not a, a good strategy. Um, so I think that'll, that'll, I'll leave it there on power.